on today's episode. We are chatting all things Julie Ertz. It's official. She has announced, the club has announced that she will play with Angel City on a one-year deal. There are some things in between there that we got to talk about. How she got here. What does it mean for club? What does it mean for Earths? Uh, what does it mean for the national team? There's what does it mean? That's the theme yeah. of today's episode. So uh, before we get into everything, a quick reminder and hello to everyone joining us. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Make sure you also follow us as a podcast. Follow, like, and download so that you never miss an episode. Lisa, we're back at it. <laughs> Uh, this is incredible news. Uh, we knew it was coming, right? We we knew from U.S. Women's National Team head coach Flacco Andonovsky and Julie Ertz herself that she was looking at clubs, looking at teams uh, that she could return to play with. Um, Flacco Andonovsky speaking just last week about how he thought it would come at the end of last week. It didn't. That that deadline has came and gone. But Monday. April 17th, we get the news that Julie Ertz is returning to the NWSL and going to play with Angel City, bulk up that midfield for Freya Coombe. There are so many positives here to talk about. Um, and of course, we had to just jump on live and, and chit chat about it right away. We were getting tweets about it. Hey, when are you guys going live? When are you talking about this? Give us like a 30 minute buffer, guys. And here we are. So thanks for joining us. <laughs> I love it, though. I love the energy. Uh, but we also need a moment to react to the news as well. We need to try to quickly content plan for that kind of stuff. I've got to write it out for you all, for people who like to absorb as much content as possible, whether it's in video or podcast or the written word. Uh, check it out on cbsports.com. But uh, here we are. I just sort of feel like um, this is something that we've been tracking or trying to pay attention to for for some time probably is let's just stick with the recent timeline is is, is recent as is, is last month when julie Ertz was named to the united states women's roster for the international window in april for the pair friendlies against ireland that was the breakout headline around mm -hmm. that roster drop were there multiple players making their return to the national team from varying injury or extended absences? Yes, of course. But Julie Ertz and her name on that roster raised a lot of eyebrows, perked up a lot of ears. Um, there were a lot of questions uh, around mm -hmm. it. Uh, it was a near, nearly a two-year absence for, for Ertz and, and her playing time with the national team. And then when we maybe narrow that lens a little bit, to the NWSL specifically, it's definitely a two-year absence. It's yeah. uh, we're talking quite a long time from um, two different levels of uh, of play for for right. a player like this. So with uh, Julie Ertz, I mean, the last time we saw her in the NWSL was. 2021 and early in the season in 2021 before the Tokyo Olympics that took place that summer. Um, and then Julie Ertz was named to the Olympic roster for the United States, went to play in Tokyo and then did not return to play for the Chicago Red Stars, um, dealing with a bit of an injury at that point. And so that was the last time fans saw her in a, an NWSL jersey was early, early 2021. And then they didn't see her in a U.S. jersey um, after those Tokyo Olympics until just last week. So it was such a long gap, one in which her rights were traded and, and taken in the expansion draft by Angel City from Chicago Red Stars. And then Earths became a free agent at the end of last season uh, before the 2023 season. Now she has a little bit of autonomy with her rights and what she's able to do as a, a free agent and where she wanted to go. But she ultimately signs with Angel City, the team that chose her and drafted her in the expansion draft in 2022. No, well, let's correct it, Lisa. Let's, well, let's, let's let's go through let's go through the timeline. Maybe that's what we could do for folks. Okay. Let's, yes. Yes. Let's let's try to let's let's try to paint the the bigger picture here. Not to like maybe you know, kind of go ahead and elongate things and say like, let's, let's go, let's throw it all the way back to when she was playing, you know, collegially uh, in, in, in Santa Clara, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying let's go all the way back there, <laughs> but in terms of her playing as a professional, she's, you know, she's already got a couple, couple ties there and strings mm -hmm. to, to, to California. Completely. And, you know, when she was drafted, it was back in 2014, it was with Chicago Red Stars. She spent, seven, eight seasons there, that final season um, in 2021, mostly injured, did not really feature for the Chicago Red Stars except for about 
25 to 30 minutes in in a in a week one match in that 2021 season. Um, suffered an MCL sprain. Uh, went went off the the roster. wasn't making appearances, but made a comeback and a push for the Tokyo Olympic Games. Um, and then just didn't make another appearance for club after that. Uh, to rewind on the national team level, they the team ended up with a bronze medal in that finish. And there were a lot of question marks, I think, about Ertz and her form um, and her health in that window of time in Tokyo. Um, so didn't see her in the buildup to that. And then we didn't really see her for club out of that competition. So this absence from league play goes back to, to 2021 and yeah. something really interesting happened in, in that off season, the, the league was preparing for not just one, but two expansion drafts. So we had Los Angeles and San Diego coming into the league. And I think this is what you're, you're alluding to initially when you're like, Hey, like there was basically a move here that was made to acquire this player. Uh, right. So, so Chicago trying to navigate a double expansion draft um, a, made a deal with Angel City for Ertz's player rights alongside Sarah Gordon as well. And in exchange, they got roster protection from that expansion draft. So now there's this very unique timeline that comes into play because we just witnessed an inaugural season from Angel City in 2022. And we didn't see Julie Ertz feature for the team. Because along with probably making her way back uh, from an MCL sprain, there were conversations between those two teams, but she announced with her husband, Zach Ertz, that she was expecting their first child. So she was away on maternity leave. And at this point, once this team concludes their 2022 season, in eighth place, out of the playoffs, in that official offseason, per the CBA, Julie Ertz was technically a free agent. So was one of those players that would probably be considered a really high target in that yeah. free agency market. But I think because of the lack of play, there, there, she, she wasn't one of these players who announced a team when that free agency window opened in November. So I think like for throwing it back for you and I covering this free agency period, I think when we were looking at the list, we also, we also had a lot of question marks around yeah. someone like Ertz. You and I, we were saying like, hey, Dabinia is the, the, the key target when we're looking at this list of pro players, despite Julie Ertz having a name on that, that list. And we just were unsure um, whether or not she was going to, to return to play. I remember when we reacted to the United States women's national team roster, I loved your first reaction from that when we were do when we were talking about that, because you even mentioned, you were like, we didn't know if we were going to see her play again. Mm -mm. Ever for club for country. I, I really, I wasn't sure to be honest, if Julie Ertz would ever return. And uh, it had been pretty transparent from black Wenanofsky and his communication with Ertz over the last several months saying that he had been in communication with her and, and in those talks. And when she was ready, um, they, they were going to have those conversations a little bit more seriously. And so we saw that come to fruition when she was named to the April International Window roster. And then there being a bit of a caveat tied with her being named to this roster, saying she needs to get minutes consistently um, if she wants a shot at making the World Cup roster later this summer. She needs to sign with the team. She needs to get game minutes. She needs to be training um, in competition because it, it was also reported that Ertz had been training with MLS Academy teams um, on the pitch, but that was not anything in, in game competition that could be observed by Black Wandanovsky himself in order to make a decision if Ertz would be on the World Cup roster or not. So that's what he needed to see from her. And at that point, she had already started talks with different clubs in the NWSL and negotiations about – where she could go and how she could impact and what kind of role she would have on different teams. And now we finally have this announcement that she's going to LA. So let me ask you this, bud. So we, we maybe were chatting a little bit about this more, more off mic, whether it was like texting or, um, you know, an emailing and our work and our work slacks and everything. But I, 
we didn't necessarily get an opportunity on the show to try to, you know, have decision watch, right? Like on, on attacking third, they're just, the window of time just, just wasn't there for us. We had these two international friendlies that took place and we were previewing, recapping and reacting to those. And then out of those friendlies, it was, we all anticipated that Ertz was going to have an announcement for club. I mean, she came out of those mix zones saying like, Hey, I got to get back. I got a flight to catch. I got some calls to make. We're going to narrow some things down. And there, there wasn't room essentially uh, or in the timeline for us to maybe kind of play around with that kind of stuff. So I want to ask you this now that it's official ain't Ertz to angel city. Was this always, was this destiny? Was this always the team in your opinion that was going to land this player? Were there other clubs, in your opinion, that maybe could have had a pitch uh, to a player like this? That's a great question. I think initially when it was posed, hey, she's looking at clubs in the NWSL, my initial reaction wasn't, oh, she's going to Angel City. Um, I I do think after a little bit of thought, right, it's a natural conclusion to come down to Angel City. But I think other options include Chicago Red Stars. Um, in in my mind, as a team that could potentially want to see her return to the pitch. As you mentioned, that's where she was drafted. It's where she spent seven, eight seasons in the NWSL and had an incredibly strong career in Chicago. She thinks of Chicago as home, uh, as part of one of her homes that she has. Um, But then you have to look at the personal side of things, especially for a player like Julia, who not only is married, um, but has a, a, a young family and a new young baby that she needs to be close with. Her husband needs to be close with. They need to be around family in order to kind of continue that growth as a family together. And that's a priority for a player like Ertz. And looking at the NFL, where Zach Ertz plays in Arizona. Okay. So that puts her a lot closer to a California side, a San Diego and Angel City. So process of elimination, right? I think Chicago and then the California teams were the first three that jumped out in my mind as teams that she would want to go to and teams that would be open to having her. Um, And then of course, like as you, you look down on it, right. And hindsight's 2020, but you wrote this up on cbssports.com as well. Um, The, when you look at the roster makeups of San Diego versus angel city, there's a lot more wiggle room at angel city for them to fit earths into the midfield um, and not shake up too much of what they already have going for them. And they need a little bit of help. And you also got to look at the money side of things and a player like earths. She has already had a very prolific career. She's now at a point where she is joining a club team, her own choice to do this, to make a world cup roster. So what does she need to be successful on the pitch and off the pitch, coaching staff, teammates, training facilities, um, support systems, location to her husband, those all come into play. And because of all those things, Angel City is a perfect fit for Julie Ertz. Yeah, I hear you 100% on that. I I think um, what were Chicago maybe long shots in that whole 11 to 12 club um, pitch spree for Julie Ertz. Yeah, probably. They were probably not 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 even dark horses, just like incredible long shot. Just, right. just sort of like listening to all the, the recent things that this player was saying and, and maybe some things that she was looking for. I mean, in a media availability, specifically mentioning some Chicago Red Stars teammates, whether it was a Kalia Watt or Shayna Matthews, how they're navigating things as mothers as well. Um, and looking at the makeup of some of these other teams, I mean, we we talked about San Diego was probably one of those teams in that free agency period where we were pretty focused on in terms of how they were specifically targeting their midfield. And they utilized free agency to try to bulk that up. They landed a specific defensive midfielder in Danny Colaprico, they continue to sign um, others onto the roster for depth. I mean, we see Havana uh, Salon as well as is part of a part of this equation as well. Excuse me, uh, Maggie Doherty Howard. So mm-hmm. I'm just I I just was like, there might not be room here, even if that's a club. Lo- like logistically, geographically speaking, like maybe trying to stay closer to their home state of Arizona, um, that m- that might not be a fit in terms of the makeup of their roster, um, despite having 
maybe having some other things that are intriguing for a player making a return. Um, you know, good coaching and somebody like Casey Stoney, um, of a competitive environment, you would be going up against Alex Morgan and Jaden Shaw and Sophia Jacobson and Amir Ali, and it goes on and on and on, right? Um, wanting to have those kind of competitive environments, but in terms of the makeup and the shift that would be required to kind of embrace and welcome this player into the fold would really, I think, kind of cause a shakeup for a team. Yeah. I think like it would be San too Diego. much for San Diego. Like they would have to change too many things in order to incorporate an Ertz 